Grace be yours and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The epistle selected for this one in Christ Sunday is recorded in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We read in the eighth chapter the first 12 verses. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work, so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it, according to your means." For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. This is God's word. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our King, dear fellow redeemed. You heard President Schrader mention the Synod Convention. I was privileged to be one of the 389 delegates at that convention at Michigan Lutheran Seminary. From the opening service to the closing service, we were reminded and encouraged in the work that we do together as one in Christ by the perfect life, the atoning death, and the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ to serve our Lord who so willingly served us. I wish you could have been there with me to hear reports from our missionaries and our administrators to hear of the countless blessings that God has showered down upon our church that both in North America and around the world as we have that privilege to spread that good news of Jesus our Savior to our fellow sinners. We want to be able to continue that work we want to be able to continue to be one in Christ. As we join our brothers and sisters in faith and in the wells today and in the days ahead. And what do we want to do in that unity? How do we want to join together with them? How will we be able to do that? We answer those questions in our theme this morning that God enables us to excel in the grace of giving. Well, see, first of all, that what will enable us to do that is the fact that we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to continue to excel in the grace of giving. Now, excel doesn't mean that we should try to outdo each other in how much we give to the church so that men will thank us and praise us. The word literally means to abound, to be abundant. And our giving to our Lord first is an act of God's grace. It is an act that the Holy Spirit works in our hearts 
Because by nature, we are selfish. By nature, you and I do not want to share and properly use the blessings that God has given us. So God needs to give us that grace of giving, of rightfully using those gifts that our God has given us. And it's about the rightful use, not the amount. The grace of giving is about the attitude of the heart, being one in Christ. So Paul encourages us today to be abounding with the right attitude of our hearts in the grace of giving of the gifts that our God has given us. Our old Adam hates that. Our old Adam loves things. How lost we were. How helpless we were when we were still dead in our transgressions and sins. But we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and have received that grace. Each and every day that grace fights our lack of desire to give. Every day that grace of our Lord Jesus Christ fights the false motives of giving that we have sometimes when we do give. Those feelings of self-righteousness, those feelings of peer pressure or guilt or just going through the motions without really having our heart behind our giving. We don't always give as we should, and we don't always have the right attitude when we do give. But we are able to excel in the grace of giving because we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The King of kings and Lord of lords who soon will return to gather his church into heaven has from eternity possessed the countless and abundant wealth of all things as the owner of all things. And yet, for our sakes, he became poor. He didn't even have a place to call home, even as the birds have nests and the foxes have holes. But the poverty of Jesus Christ was not even so much his lack of material possessions as it was the fact that he took on the debt of our sins. He took on the debt of our transgressions, a debt that you and I could never pay, a debt that made us so poor in God's eyes that he should have cast us away from his presence through eternity. But instead, through Christ's poverty, we became rich. As the Father accepted Jesus' payment of that debt by his perfect life and his atoning death, and declared it so in his glorious resurrection from the dead. You and I are now rich. Rich in the forgiveness of our sins. Rich in reconciliation with God that gives us peace. Rich in the daily bread that God provides for us each day according to our needs. Rich in that certain hope of everlasting life in heaven. What a glorious sacrifice our Lord Jesus Christ made for us so that you and I could grow and excel in that grace of giving, of having the, the right heart, the right spirit, to give with the, the right attitude, which is an attitude of self-sacrifice, willing self-sacrifice, as Jesus has given for us. When you and I remember daily how God has washed all our sins away and brought us into his family, into his kingdom through holy baptism, as you and I have our sins washed away, taken away every time we hear the gospel, as the Holy Spirit forgives our sins through the word and the sacrament of Lord's Supper, all of that forgiveness influences our hearts. It changes our hearts. 
It grows our hearts in the right attitude in the grace of giving first to the Lord. And at the same time, our living and reigning king makes sure that our cup overflows. Those Christians in Macedonia did not give of their wealth and of their abundance, but rather they gave out of their severe trial. And the second way that God enables us to excel in the grace of giving is to follow and see the examples of others. Consider those Macedonian Christians. They were suffering severe trial because of their faith. And yet out of that, their extreme poverty, their extreme joy in what Jesus had done for them, welled up in generosity to give to the offering that the Apostle Paul was gathering for the starving saints, the Jewish saints in Jerusalem. So that grace of God and that poverty welled up in their willingness to share what they had with their Jewish brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. Paul said, I didn't have to command you to do that. I didn't have to order you to do that. I didn't have to browbeat you into doing it. You did it out of the grace that God had given you in that joy in Christ. They couldn't help it. They volunteered and wanted to be a part of that great offering. They weren't the first to do that. In our first lesson this morning, we were reminded of King David, who gave generously of Israel's treasury as king, and then his own personal treasury for the building of the temple in Jerusalem. We read how the leaders of the people, the princes and leaders of the different tribes, how they gave generously to the building of the temple. In fact, if you'll recall, it was their generosity that continue, we continue reading about in 1 Chronicles 29 that we used as the basis for our Building Devoted Hearts for Jesus campaign to gather the down payment and monies to build this sanctuary, to build this expansion to our church. But then there was Zacchaeus, who gave half of all his possessions to the poor because God had visited his heart. The widow who gave her last mite out of gratitude to God. The Christians in Corinth had also volunteered and had willingly given, following the examples of fellow Christians. I'm heartened to overcome my own selfishness in my giving when I see the examples of others, of my fellow Christians, who are abundant in their love for Christ and manifest that abundance in the giving of their gifts, not in the amount of the gifts, but in their willing to give regularly, willingly, gladly for the work of the church. I'm encouraged by the results that come when we do stewardship emphases in our congregation. I still remember my first couple years in the ministry, the chairman of the Wells Board for, Minister for Home Missions visited, came out to Wenatchee, visited me, see how he was doing, and he, he encouraged me. He said, every year have a stewardship emphasis in your church. Your people want to give, but they got an old Adam. And we all need to be reminded of our blessed privilege of giving and to grow in that grace of giving uh, to our Lord Jesus. And you too, perhaps, have been encouraged by the examples of others who have that grace and have grown in that grace of making their willing offerings to the Lord. As Jesus, the grace of God, enables us 
So we are able to follow the examples of our fellow Christians, and hopefully many of the congregations will do that today, following the example of one another, and to observe this Christ the King, or rather Christ the King Sunday, and this one in giving Sunday. And finally, God enables us to excel in the grace of giving by expressing the thankfulness of our own hearts. By God's grace that has grown, that grace of giving in our congregation, our congregation has pledged, has committed 12% of our general offerings to be sent to the Synod as our congregational mission offering to do mission work, to train pastors and teachers, to provide the administration of our church body, and to provide help to congregations in a variety of areas. By God's grace as a congregation and as individuals in our congregation, we have in the past continued to support different schools or different parasynodical agencies that certain members of our congregations like to support and give to that. By the grace of God, we sit in a new building that the members of our congregation and friends of our congregation have pledged and committed over half a million dollars to date so that you and I could enjoy this temple of God where we can sing his praises and give glory. And it's my prayer that in the future that we would continue to be generous in our CMO, that we would continue to be generous in our giving to the support of our congregation, that perhaps even that money that we've been giving to the building fund over these past years maybe would be able to continue to just change that over into our regular offerings so that we can continue now to support the additional costs of our facility, but, but even more to continue to not have to worry about money so that together as one in Christ, we can take the word of God and the salvation of all sinners through Jesus out into our community and into the world. And today, our church body of which we are part has come to us and asked if we would be willing to make a special offering towards eliminating the debt of our synod so that we can take that money that we're now making, using to make payments that we would be able to continue to do the work that we're doing. Just incidentally, the money that we will save will not enable us to do additional work. It will only enable us to continue the work that we are doing at the present time. So I ask you all to prayerfully consider making use of those special envelopes that are in your mail slots this morning, to excel in the grace of giving by expressing your thankfulness to God from your own heart. In this age of materialism, it's wonderful to hear that God gives us by his grace an eager willingness and the ability and the desire to complete our offerings, and that this gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. And therefore we give to the Lord cheerfully, trustingly, and gratefully. On this day we thank Christ our King for enabling us to overflow in the grace of giving. O King, may your kingdom come, and your will be done through us. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen.